Hello everyone, and welcome to TV Talks, the show where I take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer. Today, we're taking a look at one of the more forgotten Nicktoons, la 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 la, Cat Scratch. Cat Scratch is an absolutely bizarre show with an even more bizarre history, and ultimately a very very sad treatment by the network, but one thing at a time. The series was created by Doug Tennipal. Yay, I'm not a big fan of this guy's work. I mean, he's done a couple things that are good, like Earthworm Jim the series, but he's also done Veggie Tales in the House. Yay. But this show is actually not an original creation, it is actually based off a of pre-existing property. I bet like three of you out there knew that. It's based off of Ted Nepal's graphic novel called Gear, where it's actually not about the three cats, it's about their car, Gear, as the title would suggest. And no, the car doesn't really appear in the show as it does in the book. In the show, it's just a car, but in the book, it's some kind of transformer monster thing, and he's owned by the four cats. Yeah, there's four of them. And it's definitely intended for older teens or maybe even adults. Not really for kids. In other words, not really Nickelodeon's target demographic. So, there is word that is unconfirmed that this was going to be an Invader Zim-like show, where it was actually going to be more for teens and adults. However, of course, Nickelodeon didn't really like Invader Zim when it came out, so naturally we ended up getting this version, which, I'm going to be honest, I didn't like the graphic novel. I thought it was just kind of eh. So, upon reading that, and then going into this show, re-watching it because I grew up with this show, I was... A little worried, to say the least, that it wouldn't really hold up. Before I get to that, what's the show about? Well, as the theme song states, Gordon, Waffle, and Mr. Blick, when the old lady died, she left them rich. In other words, it's this old trope where the rich old lady dies and leaves everything to her cats. And that's the show. Just about Mr. Blick, the insane megalomaniac, Waffle, the insane moron guy, and Gordon, the insane straight man? Okay, Gordon doesn't really have that much of a personality, but the other two are definitely full of that, and they go on wacky, insane adventures, and yes, this show is very insane. It didn't start off as insane, but the last episode is about them playing a video game that is unbeatable, and then when you actually do manage to beat it, it turns out to actually be some kind of space warrior training program thing that some slug aliens created so that you could save their planet. It's that kind of show. And I love it. The show isn't the most sophisticated, and it's not really trying to be at all. It's just trying to be its own crazy, weird thing. But the thing is, despite being so crazy and weird, it's surprisingly lax and down-to-earth. Although it does have the absolutely bizarre premises and strange episode concepts, it has a bit of a laid-back tone to it, and a sort of laissez-faire style of humor. For every loud, obnoxious, yelly joke, there's one subtly hidden inside each of the dialogue pieces. Rarely does this show go 20 seconds without some kind of joke, whether it be in the foreground or the background. A lot of it is character-driven, and yes, like I said, Gordon isn't exactly the most developed character. But even so, he provides a really needed role. A straight man to Mr. Blick being absolutely obsessed with himself and Waffle being... Waffle. Then of course they have their butler Hovis, then there's human Kimberly, and of course those three insane truck driving dudes. There's a bunch of little characters for them to interact off of. They don't always get a lot of focus, but when they do, they really, really run with their concepts. My favorite episode is when their butler Hovis tells them that he's tired of being mistreated by them, so he dresses up as the ghost of their old owner saying that she now leaves everything to the butler. And so now they have to wait on him hand and foot, instead of vice versa. It's a natural switch plot, but they throw in a lot of creative twists and a lot of fun energy. Plus, a lot of catharsis with Mr. Blick finally getting what he deserves, which is a main staple of the series. And I mentioned Earthworm Jim the series earlier, and although I haven't really discussed that show, these two have very similar styles of writing being very off-the-wall, bouncy, and completely chaotic, while also having a very contradictory tone, being kind of laid back and simple. You can definitely tell that Doug Tendipal wrote these. However, all of these things I have described does not translate into one very, very big thing. 
the ability to make a butt ton of money like Spongebob. See, unlike Spongebob, Cat Scratch was not meant to be this kind of super multi-trillion dollar franchise. It was just meant to be a show. And this is when Nickelodeon was starting to change up a lot of its, well, first off, core people, and then second, core values. This is the first show in Nickelodeon's history to be victim of the Spongebob effect. The Spongebob effect is Nickelodeon looking at Spongebob at its huge numbers that it gets, and then looking at a new show. And if that show doesn't get Spongebob numbers immediately, it's gone. And that's exactly what happened. This show barely lasted a year on the network and lasted only about one season. Some say two because of the bizarre airing schedule that this thing had, but officially it's only one because there was only ever one batch of episodes produced. And as soon as the show was cancelled, it was pushed to Nicktoons Network for just a little bit and then completely scrubbed clean off the network, never to be mentioned again. All that hard work and effort, down the drain. Which is a real shame because this show is a lot better than I remembered. I remember liking it alright as a kid, but this is definitely better. It's, yes, still written for adults even if it isn't in the Zim fashion. Zim was more for adults because of its tone and structure. This is more for adults than just its overall style of humor. Kids will like it, of course, but there's certainly more than a fair few adult jokes in this show. So for all the reasons I gave it earlier, I give it the Archibald seal of approval. What do you guys think of Cat Scratch? Comment below, let me know. Alright guys, I will see you next week. Good night everybody.